This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. From Innistrad to Shadowmoor, what spooky top 10 does Nitsuhon have in store? everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's Monday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10. It also happens to be Halloween, which is my favorite holiday. As such, for the last couple of weeks, all of my MTG Top 10s have been Halloween-inspired, but with an MTG Top 10 actually falling on Halloween, I didn't want to just do a list inspired by Halloween. I wanted to do a list that was about Halloween. And that's what we're doing today, with a look at my picks for the 10 spookiest cards in Magic. And by spooky, I mean the card's art and flavor really make me think of Halloween. Another way of putting it is, if you were building a Halloween-themed deck or cube, these are cards that you'd pretty much have to include. So, let's dive right in. At number 10, I have Autumnal Gloom from Shadows over Innistrad. Basically, any card that features autumn and something spooky happening really makes me think of Halloween, and that's definitely what we have here. Autumnal Gloom's art features a man walking up to a tree in the fall to chop some firewood. Little does he know that it wasn't just any tree. The other side of Autumnal Gloom is Ancient of the Equinox, which features a massive tree folk with fall foliage. There's an axe embedded in the tree folk's leg, and the man who had the axe is running away in fear. The flavor text says, When the leaves fall and the nights grow cold, look elsewhere for firewood, which appears to have been pretty good advice that this guy didn't follow. Evidently, this Ancient of the Equinox only becomes a full-blown tree folk during the fall, so it definitely falls in line with this list. At number 9, I have Veiled Shade from Guilds of Ravnica. This card was far from scary in that limited format, but the art features a creature that is absolutely terrifying with an autumn backdrop. In general, Guilds of Ravnica was set during fall on the plane, and this was the spookiest card of the bunch. This shade is wearing a dress and a veil, with the only clearly visible part of it being its incredibly sharp claws. And what you can make out under the veil is pretty terrifying, as the shade seems to have no eyes at all and a blank expression on its face. Basically, it looks just human enough to be really unsettling. The card's flavor text really drives everything home. It says, I sing songs of sorrow for my lost love. Imagine my horror when, one night, they were answered. This is the last piece of this creepy puzzle, and it indicates that what this shade is wearing might be her wedding dress. At number 8, I have Lenor Autumn Sovereign, which is from Innistrad Midnight Hunt's Commander Decks. Midnight Hunt is probably Magic's Halloweeniest set ever, and there are a few other cards from that set on this list. The set's main story involves the various humans of Innistrad gathering for a harvest tide ritual to finally rid themselves of all the scary creatures on the plain. And Lenor here plays a central role in making sure the festivities go well. The autumn ritual is infused with an eerie air about it that is very much inspired by folk horror, and combining autumn and folk horror is in fact very spooky. In fact, the card's design and art description were directly inspired by one of my favorite horror movies, Midsommar. In that movie, the main character Danny, played by Florence Pugh, becomes the May Queen during a very unsettling Swedish summer festival, and the artist, Fariba Kamse, sort of converted that look into more of an autumnal one, and that's where where we get Lenor, who is the Queen of Autumn, complete with a flower crown and floating jack-o'-lanterns. At number seven, I have two cards, Tree of Redemption and Tree of Perdition. The former is from original Innistrad, while the latter is from Eldritch Moon. These depict the same tree, just at different times. Either way, both of them are pretty spooky. The Tree of Redemption serves as an executioner's tree in the Thraben Cathedral, and that's why there are hangman's nooses all over the tree. This beautiful tree is the site of execution, and apparently, according to the flavor text, there's a belief that hanging them there can absolve their souls. Whether there is absolution or not, being a tree that is used regularly for executions is pretty intense. 
But many years later, after the rise of Eldrazi on the plain of Innistrad, the tree is transformed and become even creepier. As the flavor text says, there will be no absolution. So the positive side of this hanging tree has been completely removed. The tree is still being used for executions, and this time you can see human bodies dangling from the tree. Additionally, the tree has lost its leaves apart from a few brightly colored ones, definitely making me think of fall. At number six, I have Crossroads Candle Guide, another midnight hunt card. It features a scarecrow, a common sight during fall harvests, and it even has a jack-o'-lantern for a head. At first glance, this just seems like an innocent decoration for Harvest Tide, but the flavor text indicates there's a bit more going on here. As it says, do the candle guide's heads turn to follow you as you pass, or is it merely a trick of the flickering light? Given the creepy folk horror of the set, I'm guessing that the heads of these figures do in fact follow you. That's also indicated by the fact that this is just a straight up creature, a 3-4, that doesn't have defender or anything, so it can move whenever it wants to. At number five, I have another Midnight Hunt card, the set's Basic Plains. It features a beautiful autumnal landscape, a Crossroads Candle Guide-esque scarecrow, and a pumpkin patch. This just screams Halloween, and I don't feel like I need to go much deeper on this one. At number four, I have Reaper King, a Scarecrow Lord from Shadowmoor. It probably isn't too surprising to see this one on here since it's part of the intro animation for my Halloween Top Tens. Shadowmoor is one of Magic's spookiest planes. After all, it's a plane that's trapped in an eternal night. As I've already established, the Scarecrow type is autumnal all on its own, and this particular Scarecrow seems to have a rotting pumpkin for a head. His gangly features and proportions also call to mind a certain king of Halloween, Jack Skellington. It's also really fun that the flavor text is simply, it's harvest time, which definitely has a corny movie tagline feel. I guess the idea is he'll be harvesting anything and everything that gets in his way. If you're interested in more spooky content, I have gone a little deeper on what makes Shadow more spooky in this year's top 10 that looks at the set Eventide, as well as a Card Kingdom article about Magic's five spookiest planes. At number three, I've included two cards, and both of these also come from the plane of Shadow Moor. Gilder Baron is from Eventide, while Glimmer Baron is from Modern Horizons 2. Obviously enough, the art in these two creatures is very much inspired by the idea of trick-or-treating, as they both depict a small figure in costume carrying a bucket. These creatures aren't human, though. They are oafs. Their motives are made out to be potentially malicious by their flavor text. Gilder Bairns says, Do the glowing trinkets show it the way home, or do they set a twisted path for someone else to follow? So, it may be that Gilder Bairn is trying to lead others to their death. Glimmer Baron's motives are less ambiguous, as its flavor text says, Tricks and treats, souls and sweets, on wooded path, whom shall we meet? It's fun that trick and treat actually make it in there along with sweets, but uh, so does soul, so clearly Glimmer Baron isn't only interested in candy. Malicious or not, they're both pretty adorable, with Gilder Baron wearing a frog costume and Glimmer Baron wearing a butterfly costume. At number two, it is Jack-O-Lantern from Midnight Hunt. You knew this one would be pretty high up on this list, I'm sure. Jack-O-Lanterns are a big part of Halloween celebrations, with many people carving faces into pumpkins and putting candles into them, just as seems to be depicted in this art. Of course, this particular Jack-O-Lantern is significantly more unsettling than most you see, and it also appears to be absolutely massive, judging from the human figure to the right of it. This is another one where the flavor text augments its spookiness. It says, By the end of the festival, it was the only thing still grinning. Of course, in the story, the festival goes horribly wrong and many werewolves come and massacre many of the celebrants. And at number one, it's All Hallows' Eve from Legends. Like Reaper King, this shows up in the intro animation for these Halloween MTG Top 10s, so how could it not be on here? I mean, it basically has Halloween as its name. Obviously, the name is not identical. All Hallows' Eve is October 31st, the night before All Hallows' Day, also known as All Saints' Day. While the church largely used it as a day dedicated to the dead, including saints, for many there was an additional belief that this was a night when the dead returned to Earth. And over time, it became the popular holiday we now know as Halloween. All Hallows' Eve has over the years simply become a single word. First, the all was dropped, and then it was called Hallow Even, and 
Over time, the V fell out of the second word, and that's how we get to Halloween. The art depicts a jack-o'-lantern, a ghost, and some sort of spooky gargoyle. The card is also on point in terms of flavor, as it returns all dead creatures to the battlefield. It's also pretty sweet that it uses unique scream counters with the errata. So, those are my picks for the 10 spookiest magic cards. I hope you all have a safe and fun Halloween. If you want to own any of these Halloween-themed cards, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each of them. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, including a lot more MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to catch up on the over 500 other MTG Top 10s, including almost 30 that are Halloween-themed, you should see the playlists on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.